Hi, this is Eric Martin with Board Game Geek. I'm here today looking at Discovery, the Era of Voyage, a two to four player game originally released in 2015 by the Japanese design group AI Lab, now out in a Chinese English edition in 2018 by Emperor S4. In this game, you are taking your tiny little boat, which looks much bigger when I hold it this close to the camera, and you are sailing from island to island in order to collect money and resources and use that money and resources in order to get one or the other through trades or to eventually convert them into points, primarily by spending those items to invest in the islands. And the more that you invest, the more that you will get out of them and you start elevating everything and building and the game ends relatively quickly after that. And then you tell your points. Here's a game set up for four players. We each start with our ship on the central island. We're surrounded by a ring of seven islands and those islands consist of a cultural island related to victory points, two commercial islands for trade, and four production islands. And those are shuffled and laid out in a random order. We each start with three or four money and we have investment markers, the use of which I'll demonstrate in a minute. On a turn, you must sail to a new location. If you're starting in the central island, you go to any exterior island you want. And when you go there, you must orient yourself either clockwise or counterclockwise, which will determine your possible movement for the next turn. Once you get there, you can choose to take the incomer action shown in the leftmost space. You'll usually want to do this. No reason not to take a fruit and add it to my collection. Then you may optionally invest in the island by paying the cost up here, which is seven money, which I don't have, so I'll pass on that for now. Each other player takes their turn. They go somewhere, they orient themselves, they do their things. On my next turn, I'm either going to sail in the direction that I am pointing and I can go one or two spaces for free, or I can pay money if I wanna go extra. If I wanna to go to this third space, I pay a coin. If I wanna travel four spaces on a turn, I pay three coins, five spaces is six coins, and six spaces is impossible. You can't do that no matter how much money you have. Instead of circling to one of the exterior islands, you can always return to the central island. You get an income of only one coin. It's not very exciting. Any number of people can go there and you just hang out. The next turn you can go wherever you want. So if you're trying to reach something behind you, you don't want to spend a lot of money or you don't have that money, you want to change plans, change directions, that's the route to go. If you go to where someone else is located, you have to pay them a coin. They're just hustling things out of you, causing trouble. But fine, I will pay him a coin because then I get some gold. Put that in front of me as well. And everyone else is going to take their turn Maybe they go over here, or they do various things. Let's not worry about them. We will take my next turn. I go here, I get two fruit. These other people do things. I take my next turn, I'm gonna go three spaces, which means I need to pay a coin to the bank. I will collect a spice and a coin, put that in front of me, and then I can pay the investment cost shown here of two fruit and a gold. And when I do that, I put an investment marker here, which is important for two reasons. Turns in Discovery flow very smoothly because they're very short. You move somewhere, you get income, or you do a trade, or you buy victory points, you invest, but that usually doesn't happen. So you take these little turns over and over again, getting messed up when people get in your way, which you'll run out of money and you can't go somewhere, you get stuck, or you decide not to go somewhere, you take a different route, you go to the central island instead of giving someone money because you know they want money in order to invest somewhere. An investment is what drives the points in this game. Once I have an investment in that island, the next time I visit, not only am I going to get the leftmost income or action, I also get the middle one. And if I put down a second investment marker, I will get all three of them. If someone else comes in as well, that's fine. They'll get the middle ones, the black and red players will only get the leftmost, and I'll get all three. So the benefit of going to particular places changes over the course of the game, depending on where you're investing. On top of that, you're also trying to get majority ownership of the island at the end of the game. If I have more investment markers than anyone else, I'll score three points. The blue player will get two points right now. If they go here and tie, then we would both get two points at the end of the game. So this benefits the blue player by knocking me down a point, but also by getting them all three spaces here. Once someone puts a third marker on an island, that's locked off and no one can place anything there again. Discovery ends one of three ways. One is that a player places all of their investment markers on islands, and this is the only way I've seen in the three games that I've played. 
Alternatively, if the victory points run out on the cultural island, or all of the islands get locked down by having people place three markers on them, which could happen only in a four player game, just based on the number of investment markers in play. The trade islands, when you go there, work a little differently because you have a trade value shown on the card here where I can make two trades for fruit to money or money to fruit, either way. I can throw away this spice and get three coins. I can spend four coins to get a gold. And those were my two trades that I could do. Once I place an investment marker, I can make a third trade. If I place two or more markers, I can then adjust the value of what I'm getting when I'm buying or selling, which can be a huge benefit. The other trade island lets me trade fruit and spice for four coins or the other way around. And again, and then one good for any two goods. As you go to the, the cultural island, the cost for victory points goes down as you invest in it. It costs six coins to get one point to begin with. Once you place a marker, it's only three coins for a point and then two coins for a point. And you can do them multiple times if you have multiple markers. So I could spend two for one point, three for another point, six for another point. Take all the points. There's an overview of Discovery, which I played three times now on a review copy from Emperor S4, once with two players, twice with three. The starting setup of the islands changes the nature of gameplay a lot because this is a shared engine game. We all have the same options available to us laid out on the islands, and you're trying to make good choices of which goods to get in order to invest in different places. However, that gets messed up by people getting in your way, which costs you money. You have to give them money, and they're going to turn around and use that money against you, either by getting trades that they couldn't have gotten before or making investments, which is going to ramp up their production or their ability to trade or buy points. You don't want that. So it's a race with an engine and a shared engine in, in which elements of that engine will improve for you as you invest. Now, of course, you might think that everyone will invest along the same lines if you look at the the engines that are out there in terms of which goods and which money producing things can be best transformed into points but if everyone's competing for the same thing well that's great but they're only going to get a small number of victory points you want to spread those investments out in order to compete for majorities where you can and where it makes sense and that will vary based on where people are already investing. Aside from that, the game includes more islands. So you don't just have the assortment that I showed initially available to you. You have much more than that. This is the initial assortment that the game suggests you try because it has a nice arrangement of things that all work well. You have four other production islands, and you're gonna choose any four of those at random as long as all three types of resources are produced. You're gonna choose any two commercials out of the four, any one cultural out of the four, and shuffle those up and lay them out. So you get a different layout each time. And part of your skill in the game is gonna be your ability to read the board and see what you think is going to be worthwhile. And that will come only with experience, which is hard for me to talk about with playing only three times, but I played with the same group twice with three players, played the basic setup, and then we tried a random setup, shuffling out things at random, and both the other players caught on to something very quickly where they could do this, that, and the other, and I thought I was trying a different path to race those engines, if you will, and the game ended before I could really get going. Even though yeah, it seems like the game should take longer than it does. The game ends very quickly. It's got this quick ramp, and then it's just like, boom, we're done. We've dropped off the last investment marker, game ends. It feels like it should go a little longer, but that's not what the game is. And the rules actually suggest you could take out investment markers and only have seven or six or down to five if you want for an even shorter, quicker, punchier game. You have to play that way knowing that it is a race for those points. And you're seeing what people have available at all times and where they can beat you. And that may affect where you wanna go and what you wanna do. Again, it's all very tight, constrained, minimalistic feel, fits in a tiny box, and it could actually fit in a box half this size. So if you buy it, get ready to cut it down. Make it even smaller.